Uh, right now, let's uh, turn our subject, our uh, attention back to the subject of the junior doctors' strike. Junior doctors have gone on strike uh, as of 7 o'clock this morning for six long days. It's the longest strike in NHS history. It's taking place in the middle of what is always annually our winter crisis. It comes by every year between the... Uh, uh, the, the uh, autumn crisis and the spring crisis. But this week is, as NHS leaders have been telling us, the busiest day of the year, or busiest week of the year for the NHS. Coming out of Christmas and New Year, all those bank holidays, people getting back to, uh, to well, trying to get back to work, but too poorly to do so. But also, of course, we've got coronavirus still. Yeah, COVID's still around. We've got flu, we've got rhinovirus, and all the other ailments of winter. Well, the uh, question I'm asking you today, though, is whether or not it is immoral for junior doctors to go on strike in this, the busiest week of the year for the NHS. Love to hear your thoughts. Let's ask right now one of the men who's on the picket line. That's Dr Robert Lawrenson. He's co-chair of the British Medical Association's Junior Doctors Committee. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Morning. It's very, a very noisy picket line behind you, uh, Robert. Um, can I put the question to you? Is, is it immoral for doctors to go on strike this week of all weeks? No, I don't think it's immoral at all, because what our doctors are doing is trying to restore the 26% pay cut that we've had over the last 15 years, a pay cut that has led to driving doctors away to other countries and has led to massive waiting lists of 7.6 million people, or the time it takes to see a doctor in A&E, which is far exceeding the four-hour standards. And, of course, everyone knows how difficult it is to get a GP appointment. And, ultimately, this just boils down to simple economics. It's supply and demand. The demand for healthcare is high, the supply of doctors is low, and the government's answer to this is to cut our pay. It makes no sense. Why is there a shortage of doctors? We've been importing doctors from overseas for many years, something I've actually always railed against on the basis that we've actually got thousands of young people, grey days coming out of their, their backsides at A-level, uh, unable to get onto courses, medical courses, to study in universities in the UK. People who want to be doctors qualified to do so, and we haven't been training them up. Am I not right in thinking the BMA agreed with the government in terms of having a limit on the number of people in Britain training to be doctors? Aren't you part of the problem? No, you're wrong. That's not what happened. What you're referring to is... To... Hello? Hello? We, we can still hear you. Keep going. We can still hear you, Robert. I don't know. Robert thinks... I've got Robert... some weather channel. Oh, right, that's whether well, that's not helpful. Can, Robert, if you keep talking, we can uh, we can still hear you. Come, someone, please. <laughs> I can't. I can't hear. It. Sorry, I oh, can't hear. Anything. Okay, tell you what. While that, channel. while we get that sorted, let me talk to Benedict for a moment and hopefully get that sorted. I'm not sure the weather channel is very very helpful in that. Um, there is look, there is a shortage of doctors who are willing to mm. work in the NHS. But we were just discussing a bit earlier. One of the things that's frustrating is. That, that, you know, doctors say, well, I don't want to work in the NHS anymore, I'm not paid enough, mm. but I believe in the NHS and the NHS needs, you know, save the NHS, all of these campaigns, very much tied in with each other. But then they're going to go off to countries like Canada, New Zealand, Australia, where they're going to work in systems which are not based on the NHS. Yeah. They're social um, insurance schemes, mm. which is what a lot of people in this country are saying was what we need, is what most of Europe has. Mm. Um, and yet they say, no, we have to save the NHS in exactly the form that it's in right now. I mean, I think a lot of this, it just comes from the fear that what's going to end up happening is what they have in the United States, which is not the system that anybody is proposing. Nobody else has it apart from the United States. Yeah. Uh, but equally, only, only we and Cuba, I think, have something you know, yeah. that's similar to the National if, Health And Fair. if our system was so brilliant... If, if, if the system yeah. was so brilliant, then people would be, you know, keen to stay is the key thing. But, you know, you're right. We don't train enough of our own doctors. So, you know. Yeah. Um, I think we've got to talk to Robert Lawrenson back. Uh, he's on the picket line at Guy's St Thomas' Hospital. Sorry about that. W was the Weather Channel interesting, at least? No, that's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Robert, you're saying, OK. I'm not so sure. I think there's something about a storm going on. <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, there's certainly a storm in the NHS. Right. It's so come back. It's come back. I've got the weather. <laughs> oh, God. As this is so I frustrating. Got, I've, um, I've got you now. I've got you now. Go, right. Even, do you know what? No, even I've if you get the now. weather in your ear, take it out and just keep talking. We'll, we'll carry on. Um, OK, let's get to the love of the matter. Is it immoral? Because doctors... OK, you say we haven't got enough doctors. Um, 
we you know we need more doctors. But a lot of doctors are saying they're going to leave. They're going to. I was just saying to Benedict, they're going to go and work in countries like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, where they don't have an NHS system like ours. They have a social insurance system like ours. Uh, it's very different to ours, like many of the countries in Europe as well. Why are so many doctors at the BMA obsessed? We have to save the NHS in the format you have, and yet it's betraying the doctors you claim to represent. <laughs> So um, that, uh, that's not a message that I recognise. The message that we're putting out here is that no doctors work 26% less than they were 15 years ago. It doesn't matter what healthcare system you have, you can't start for any healthcare system if you pay a doctor £15 an hour, and we're asking for as little as £21 an hour. Uh, how the healthcare service is funded is rightly a conversation for the general public in, in a general election. That's not something that we're talking about. The, you know, the fact of the matter is uh, doctors are required to work in any healthcare service and they needed to be uh, valued appropriately. And this government's moment is to rectify a workforce crisis and a lack of supply of doctors by cutting pay. That doesn't make any economic sense. Uh, why have other healthcare workers accepted the pay deals the government has made, including the consultants, uh, nurses, um, other clinicians? Why are the junior doctors alone holding out and demanding this 35% pay rise? So let's make it clear, first of all, that we're asking for doctors to start on £21 an hour. OK, that's really important because some people see 35% and think that's quite a lot. It's not. It's about £1 billion and the government has already spent £2 billion on the strikes themselves. They also are paying people called physician associates who do a two year degree 35% more than a doctor, which doesn't make any sense either. Lastly, nurses rejected their deal. They remain in disputes with the government and the government and the country have abandoned our nurses because our nurses haven't had a strike mandate, which is the only thing this government will listen to. We don't want to strike. We'd much rather work in a collaborative fashion. But even that avenue that we used to have, we used to have regular negotiations with NHS employers about our contract. The government tore up that mandate a year ago and forbids the NHS from talking to us about our contract and improving our contract. And that's while you're on strike. While you've still got a strike mandate and still plan strikes, the government say the NHS can't talk to you, they won't talk to you. When was the last time there was any constructive conversation with representatives of the junior doctors and representatives of the NHS Trust, the health secretary, whoever, sitting at the same table in the same room? When, would, when did that last happen? Oh, uh, I actually don't know when we last sat in the same room as the health secretary. She's not present in the negotiations. She sends her civil servants to negotiate. Well, that's for fair her. enough. But anyone um, representing the last time we spoke with the civil well, you need a political mandate to be able to actually have the budget to be able to restore doctors' pay, and civil servants don't have that mandate at the moment. The last time we sat down with the civil servants was on the 4th of December, which is when they offered a 3% uh, offer uh, in one year, which uh, does nothing to restore the 26% pay cut we've had over the last 15 years. And in fact, you know, there are some doctors who are paid less now in real terms than they were during the pandemic. And that's just reprehensible. Does, can I just ask finally, is, is this strike, I mean, it's six days this time round, um, and no doubt more strikes coming. You, are you planning to carry on going on strike until you get somewhere close to your 35% opening demand? I mean, no one thinks you're going to get 35%. How many people are you prepared to uh, effectively allowed to die, because people, you know, people are going to die today because of the strike. They'll die tomorrow, the next day. People will die. I know people are already dying, excess deaths, because of long delays in the healthcare service, which aren't necessarily not the responsibility of junior doctors. They were political decisions, management decisions. But how many patients do you think it's reasonable to, to die for you to get the pay deal you want? So we're not asking for 35% all in one go. We're very happy to structure it over a couple of years. And actually what we've seen is um, the government abdicate their responsibility to have any kind of healthcare system. It doesn't matter what healthcare system that is. They need something in place to deliver healthcare to this country. You know, doctors aren't doing anything to cause that. That's nonsense. We're just, not, we're just saying that we're not going to work 
15 pounds an hour. We want our pay restored, and that looks like 21 pounds an hour. But none of these strikes need to happen. None of them. Not a single day needs to go on. And indeed, Victoria Atkins says she has another offer to make. So it begs the question, why doesn't she just make it? She can avert the next five days of strike action if she makes a credible offer. OK, right. Yeah, I know you're not going to answer about the number of patients, but there we are. I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you for persevering through the, the sound problems, but I appreciate that.